Uh, thanks everybody for coming here. And uh, so today we are going to do to present is the storage computing and the beyond for Web3. And uh, so as everybody knows that, or some people don't know yet, uh, first one is part of Firecon Orbit Ambassador Project. And uh, we are luckily get sponsored by the Firecon Foundation, by Orbit, and also with a lot of ecosystem team here, also Firecon development team here. It's really an honor to be here to hosting the submit. And uh, Huai is coming here today, and uh, thanks for coming. Okay, great. So, so actually, like uh, today, we are in we are in a big market. It's a trillion dollar market, computing and storage. So there are challenges about storage, computing, and the bandwidth. So everybody, like you know, like lots of companies recently, they started their project from Web2 to Web3. We know that uh, Meta, previous Facebook, Google, and also companies in China like Tencent, AliCloud, they all rush into Web3. So what makes us different? What makes Firecoin different than AWS? So we can go to tech here. So with one interesting thing that happens is with AWS, this is one of the most using cloud at the moment. So all the data ownership, actually, you don't really own the data. It's AWS own the data. We know that, uh, for example, when you have uh, NFTs or something on the store on AWS, uh, you think you buy the NFT, you think you buy the storage, but actually the owner of the S3 bucket, he can turn it off and it won't be used. And also, uh, even though like uh, the owner doesn't change the bracket, if uh, Amazon don't like you, or some instance happens, they said we stop service for this region, you lost it. But with Firecoin, you don't have this issue because Firecoin is a decentralized storage. You can save your copies on lots of nodes. Currently, with Firecoin, we have more than 5,000 nodes worldwide, so theoretically, you are be able to distribute the stories on 5,000 locations. And um, another interesting thing is that with the payment, so AWS only accept US dollars, so which means that any places that doesn't support US dollars or US credit card or US payment unions like uh, Swift, you are not be able to use an AWS service anymore. But with Firecoin, you don't have this issue. You still can use Firecoin as a payment and also other cross-chain solutions, like uh, first one provide cross-chain payment with USDC or any payment, you'll be able using the decentralized storage with any cryptocurrency or even US dollar you want. And uh, another interesting thing is that uh, who is the vendor? So imagine uh, if you want to use AWS services and the AWS want to set up who provide a service for you, they need to build a new data center somewhere, for example, in Asia region, in Russia region, in whatever regions, so this is the cost. But with, with decentralized storage and computing, it's different. In Firecon node, actually, is the vendor is everybody. So you can see that there are, currently there are over 100 data centers in Firecon network are providing over 500 petabyte storage, uh, uh, not 500 petabyte, over 18 gigabyte storage worldwide. Who is the owner? It's vendors. So this distributed owners, it can be owned by Asia enterprise, owned by US enterprise, usually by EU enterprise. They all fit the law and the governance of local. So the network ex expansion actually is, there's no boundary. It can increase the unlimited. So that is a beautiful part. And uh, we all know that in the last one and a half a year, Firecoin has been expanded worldwide, which means that Firecoin is already the number one Web3 web infrastructure, which means that the future of Web3 is already open the door for you guys. You can do in the storage, you can do in computing. Uh, hardware is there, and how to use it is today's topic. Yeah. So this is what we have in Web3 now. We have over three tokens. We have over 200 SDKs, and you can see all those logos here. This is what you we want to do, so the Web3 computing of data you need to do. It sounds 
Does that mean that uh, sounds great for you? Yeah, on one point, it's great, which means that you have so many cho choices. But on the other side, it's, it's also a disaster. How can we choose, right? When you would want to do, uh, for example, hosting website. First one, like uh, you need to run in a block blockchain node, you want to run in the storage, find the storage node, you need to make which payment, you want to use support the network, Bitcoin network, which network you want to support. And also the token volume, right? When you make a payment, you find the, like a token price change the day by day, and uh, how can you make sure your service price is solid? Maybe today you, you purchase a lot of different tokens, and another day you find it lost half the value. So those are the challenges with for people from Web 2 to going to Web 3. Yeah. So this is the big map we are thinking is going to happen in Web 3. It will have lots of components here. So for example, uh, you need uh, So basically, like you need uh, to have a decentralized ID, and um, that's the access point. With a decentralized ID, you will use your wallet, or which is, uh, uh, can use data path, and which means that you can use to encryption your data, and you can retrieval after. And the another thing is that uh, with a wallet, you'll be able to make the payment. So the DID essentially like uh, not just give you access to your data, but it also give you the way of payment, switch different network, switch different um, tokens, and uh, then you are need a bridge into a storage. Imagine currently you are hosting a website, you need a, a gateway to host in a storage. You know, and after you get a storage on the data on the IPFS, um, you are be able to uh, keep over the network. So. The storage point, uh, currently we already know that there was solutions as a Pinata can provide over 30,000 uh, websites online already. We know that the Ocean Protocol, they have data set uh, on top of the IPFS, and uh, recently we did lots of projects uh, in Bandit Labs, and uh, I saw that um, over half of the project, they are using IPFS as a storage. So can you imagine which, which is another half which we are using? AWS and the Google. So, you know, yeah. So after that, you can do in the computing over the network. We know that Firecoin have a very potential of selling workers with very strong, very powerful machines can be used for computing. Those are the potential networks we are going to so this uh, <coughs> image, we take it from the about uh, the IPFS. Um, you can use in your wallet to sign a data file, which is a CID, container ID, and you can put it on S, and uh, you can, and uh, as a different pieces, uh, decrypt it as well. And for you can retrieve the container hash from the IPFS node you have to do something like a computing and uh, over the smart contract. Yeah. So this is the one product we recently developed with the first one. So it enables you to use MetaMask connected with your wallet. And then you will be able to make a payment. So sorry. Based on stable coin, and you have different uh, slices of data. You can see like the average processing. You have different status. You can you can see that it's already distri location distributed on different nodes. You can have backup on three to five different nodes according to your usage, and it also provide you a cache layer immediately after you upload the file. So this is the big map. We we have been built for the people story NFTs. So basically, like when you're doing the upload, you are be able to upload to the Fraco network using a browser, and it will be saved in a smart contract. Before your data is actually 
back up to FICO network, you won't be able to, it won't be charged. It will be locked uh, found. It will put the data on the IPFS gateway and uh, the scheduling back up to FICO network and it will also give you a on-chain proof from Chainlink network. So the, how it works is when Firecoin have all the storage published to the network, the on-chain proof will go through the Chainlink and put it back to the original network you have to make the payment, for example, Polygon. After you get the payment proof, uh, we have unlock the, your payment. Part of the payment go to the storage provider or service provider uh, the unused part, for example, there was a five node backup successfully, two nodes not finished the job, that the uh, unfinished part were refund to or original user. And also we provide the one click mint as NFT, so the data will be, you can sell your data, or for example, the AI data, deep learning data set on the open sea market for people to do in transfer. You can also upload some financial proof, for example, like mining proof, so you can get the airdrop from time to time using the same methodology. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another computing over data. After the data is on the IPFS, you'll be able to do the training. This is a famous uh, um, training monkey. I was uh, thinking of doing a live demo, but uh, there was some technical issue, so I'm not be able to show the live demo but uh, we are still presented after maybe tomorrow. If we fix the problem tomorrow afternoon, we are going to have a workshop for the hackathon. So there will be a one month hackathon come after with $50,000 uh, with five different topics, include the net, uh, net drive, uh, DID, computing over data, and uh, also the bounty from Chansif about some bugs detection on FVM and related topic. So people interested can sign up and uh, drop to practice. We are going to do a workshop after. Yeah. So this is the Web3 uh, suite, currently already finished based on Fracon network. We have a storage provider detection software where it shows all the 2,000 nodes globally who provide storage services and to show which one in data center, which one has which kind of data bandwidth you can use. Um, we have the storage proof uh, for on-chain, and we have the data set uploading, multi-cross-chain payment, and uh, we also have the Web2 to Web3 converter. People can convert their S3 um, object from AWS direct to Fracon network. So we're also building a great uh, SDK, enable people to proactively upload thousands of files to Fracon networks with one shot. There will be JS SDK, Python SDK. We also provide a Slack, Discord, communication cat channels for people who is interested to use it. Yep. So currently, like uh, first one nodes has already over 50 nodes distributed over the world, and uh, we have uh, support over one petabyte, uh, 10 petabyte storage, and uh, sending over 30,000 DLs back up the worldwide. Uh, all those nodes, you can see that there are storage providers are currently converting to Web3 service providers with the first one Web3 technologies. Yeah, so this is our development schedule. Uh, we are going to launching the um, uh, token payment on the mainnet in the coming months. You will be able to use in the USDC for payment on Firecoin storage and other computing solutions. So you are be able to do in the computing over network in the coming months. And uh, also thanks to the sponsors and the permanent partners from Binance Lab, Pearl Lab, Firecoin Foundations, FBG Capital, and Water Drip Capital, Orange Storage, and for people to make it happen today. And uh, also lots of thanks, uh, thanks to the Canada government and the Gable government, they give our tax credit, resource credits for continuous our great work. This is today's event schedule. We have different sessions, and especially in the afternoon, we have Huan, Binance Labs, and Channing to do presentations about uh, how the Web3 network continue growing, and there are also incubation sessions after. Yeah, and thanks everyone, and I hope you guys enjoy today's event.